S and C's listening in, spending some time early on in your, for your coaching and, and communication side of things, managing a group for you know junior sports is helpful. Absolutely. Like straight up, if you're not coaching something, like it doesn't need to be, you know, high level S and C. You're not going to walk into the best clubs in the world and be an S and C just because you ask. Mm. But if you can, like, I, look, I started coaching basketball at a local club um, in Sydney and I was assisting at a representative level, like eight, 18, 19. Like, it, it, it's not like you're not going to waltz into high level stuff. But if you can manage a group of people, deliver information in a way that actually is effective and changes behavior, like that's the essence of any kind of coaching. And if you can't do that, then I don't care if you call yourself an S and C coach, a technical coach, whatever coach, like you're not going to be as effective as you can be. What are some classic sort of football drills um, that you've seen over the last couple of years now working in footy, um, but then you've added in a, a maybe a more basketball type drill to it or a rugby element to it? So in terms of conditioning stuff, what I like to do, and this is less a matter of like um, taking from basketball or rugby or anything. It's more a matter of, because I'll have to work a lot of the times with a football coach. And I know as myself, as someone who's been a head coach, you know, you've got a bit of an ego about you and, you know, you want to, this is the way we want to do stuff. So I think it's, for me, I found it's less a matter of how do I create some sort of conditioning thing? Mm -hmm. And it's more a matter of, okay, how do I work with this coach? They've got their um, drill that they want to do. And a lot of the time it might be like an in tight drill, like a sort of um, a touch drill, a quite in close, which is really is just sort of contextual agility, which there's, uh, there's no point in me trying to create something brand new when we've got some sort of in tight, drill that they're already doing that's going to tick all the boxes that I need to first working at Essendon Football Club both across the AFL men's and, and VFL um, in assistant sort of internship role talk talk us through how that would sort of look both from a um, athlete development point of view what were some things that you sort of learned straight away that are valuable for footballers but also from a career point of view in terms of progression and and uh, you know recognizing potentially it's you know elite sport is something you're passionate about so I'll start with the AFL side because that was, I, I spent, you know, a, a handful of days working around them. Yeah. Um, it was, for me, it was mostly get in, um, learn the toys, learn the, you know, the GPS stuff, learn some of the, the gym aware stuff, some of the power testing, um, getting around it, seeing the, the flow of the day, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, heading out on the track and really seeing how players relate to the S and C sports science side, challenges that you've faced over your career, um, and and what have you learned? How have you grown from them? <laughs> so um, I'm a perfectionist, which is not a good thing. Don't don't say, oh yeah, okay, this guy's a perfectionist. I'll be no, don't no, don't be a perfectionist. It's terrible. Um, that's probably one of the biggest challenges that I've had is that I'll have that um, paralysis by analysis. Um, and honestly, there's no singular detail in physical performance that is going to have that big of an impact that you should lose sleep over it. Mm. Like if, if you're stopping the rollout of an otherwise pretty good intervention because it's not perfect, then you're missing out on a lot. Like let, let, let the chaos be there, um, which I know has been a big challenge for me as an individual. For the athletes or, or parents of young athletes listening in, what are some common strength conditioning, athlete development, sort of mistakes that you see and you're now working obviously privately with us, where you're seeing people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, um, but also, you know, you've got a fair uh, sense by working in two AFL programs of, you know, what's relevant, what's not, what, what are some things that you feel that young athletes that haven't been in the system or been in a talent pathway system uh, potentially, you know, make mistakes with or, 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 you know, need to focus more of their energy towards other things? Mm. Um, well, other than the, the biggest one being not doing any S&C stuff, um, but other than that, um, I'd probably say majoring in the minor. And what I mean by that is really looking at um, whether it's, 
in terms of trying to find exactly the right supplement because I know you know we're, we're all teenagers and we're all trying to find what's the best mix of supplements to make me massive when you're going to the gym like maybe once or twice a week um or or another way would be looking at like the cool flashy really high level exercise that you find on instagram and not seeing the progressions of over you know one two six twelve months that it took to get there Mm. not paying them any attention 